room, ladies and gentlemen. Does anyone have any seats that are open at their tables? Okay, so we will help you find a seat, those that do not have seats. What a great turnout, though. Well, last fall, members of our clubs attended a meeting in Yuba City, and it was to hear about the El Dorado Hills um, Run for Courage organization. And we heard a story of a girl from Chico who was trafficked 11 years ago. Then in September, Kate, Dr. Kate Tranchell came to our club and she spoke about um, more human trafficking issues. And we felt as a club and an organization, it was really important for more people to understand and know what is happening in our community in Chico. And so as a result, both clubs decided, let's put on a luncheon. Next time I think we do it, I can do my big off evenings. Hello, I'm Dr. Kate Tranchell, um, and it's lovely to see so many of you here today interested in this pressing human rights problem that's, um, I think, one of the most critical of the 21st century. Uh, today, what I'm going to do in the time allotted to me is um, give you some definitions of what human trafficking is, what it is not, and um, just to sort of start the conversation. So. Uh, I have to learn how to use the technology. There we go. <laughs> um, the, uh, the most common definition of human trafficking comes from the Palermo Protocol that was adopted in 2000 by the United Nations. And according to the Pro Palermo Protocol, um, human trafficking, as you can read up here, the recruitment, transport, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of coercion, violence, the threat of violence, deception, for the purpose of some kind of financial gain, um, labor exploitation or forced prostitution are some of the most common forms. Oops. Um, so what does this mean? What is trafficking? Well, first of all, trafficking is for some kind of financial gain or commercial gain. So it in includes the method, which is recruitment, transfer, transporting, harboring, receipt, of a person or persons. Um, the means is through the use of force, coercion, uh, fraud, uh, promise of payment, uh, the threat of violence, um, the abuse of power, or the abuse of the, the victim's um, vulnerabilities. So that's what human trafficking is. What it is not, it is not the same as smuggling smuggling people across borders. It is not, um, you don't have to transport anybody across any national, state, or international borders. And it is not just forced prostitution. There's lots of different kinds of trafficking according to the Palermo Protocol. <clears throat> Uh, some of the most prevalent types of human trafficking globally, um, of course, is uh, uh, sexual slavery. Um, according to a recently released, I'm kind of pleased that I found this, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime uh, last week released its, most, its latest report on global human trafficking. Um, over 60% of the, the victims of human trafficking are uh, women. 75% uh, are women and children um, explicitly for uh, sexual trafficking. Um, the next most prevalent means or um, type of human trafficking is trafficking for labor exploitation. And um, there's been numerous cases in the Central Valley of people being trafficked um, for labor exploitation. So it's happening here in California. Um, it's happening in the fields of California. Um, another type of trafficking that is not quite so prevalent is begging. Oftentimes traffickers use uh, children to beg on street corners and if they don't come up with their required amount of money, uh, they're beaten or then they're forced to have sex to recover the, the amount that the trafficker had set for the child. Um, there's also lively traffic in body parts. Um, the United States uh, also engages in that, although generally it's citizens of the United States are the recipients of trafficked body parts. 
Um, and usually what happens in this case is the victim is lied to. Um, they willingly, oftentimes willingly, enter into this. They agree to sell a kidney, being told that they're going to get $10,000, $20,000 and then they get charged for the hospital for both people, um, they get charged for anesthesia, they get charged for the travel. Um, I, I've interviewed a number of these people. Uh, most of them get about $500 to $1,000 um, for selling a, a kidney. Fetal tissue is also another uh, form of human trafficking, and then, of course, uh, children for soldiers, but we don't really have that in the United States. Okay, here we go. So, as I mentioned, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime just came out with a new report um, releasing some really new information about human trafficking. They work in conjunction with an organization called the International Labor Organization, the ILO, as well as the International Organization for Migration, La Strada, and other international um, other international organizations, and what this latest report said that 27% of, of all victims globally of human trafficking are children, and of that 27%, two out of three are girls um, for, for sexual exploitation. 75% um, of people who are trafficked globally are um, women and girls. 58% of global human trafficking, as you can see from this, is trafficking for, um, for sexual exploitation, 36% for labor exploitation. So again, most people, when you say human trafficking, they automatically think what we're talking about is sexual slavery. That's not um, accurate, no, not true. And then in terms of law enforcement, um, of the 132 countries that the United Nations has identified as having trafficked trafficking, human trafficking, 16% uh, have not recorded a single conviction for human trafficking. So 16% of that 132 countries have not um, had any kind of conviction for human trafficking. Oops. Oh. Bear with me, I'm totally a technological nightmare. Okay. <laughs> Um, I thought I'd bring to you some sort of disturbing statistics on human trafficking. Again, one of the things that, um, to keep in mind as we're all talking today, we really don't know the magnitude of the problem we're talking about. It's an illegal activity, and it's not like the traffickers stop at the local law enforcement or census bureau and say, I've got five. <laughs> uh, right? So we really don't know. Um, the most conservative estimates say that there are about uh, 27 million slaves on the planet today, more per capita than at any other time um, in human history. That figure, however, is very conservative. Um, the ILO, the International Labor Organization, uh, just reported that there were 20 million people trafficked for labor exploitation alone. Um, and Nicholas Kristof, who does a lot of work in China, according to his figures, there are 60 million people used, uh, trafficked for labor exploitation in China alone. So we really don't know the magnitude of the, of the problem. Um, conservative estimates globally are uh, about 800,000 men, women, and children a year are trafficked, up to 4 million. Again, we just don't know how many we're talking about. What we do know is it is the largest growing, fastest growing illegal activity in the world today. It's now surpassed um, the trade in arms and is quickly closing in on the trade on drugs. The reason for that is it is massively lucrative. You can only sell a drug or a gun once. You can sell a human being, I know I've interviewed some of them, up to 40 times a day. So uh, you get a lot of um, return on your initial investment. Oh, when we're talking about trafficking. Um, some disturbing uh, statistics, um, somewhere between 200,000 and 300,000 U.S. kids are trafficked internally within the United States each year, largely for labor exploitation. And if you were to go down to International Boulevard in Oakland any night of the week, you'd see about 100 kids for sale and their pimps standing just in the shadow. It's a huge problem, it's a hu and it happens in Chico, as you'll, you probably already know, but you'll find out as well. Um, many U.S. cities are ranked as top destinations for predators to come to buy children, child sex slaves. 
Atlanta, Georgia is ranked 13th in the world uh, as a top, top vacation spot for uh, pedophiles. Um, San Francisco and Oakland are also very, very high destinations. Um, a tremendous amount of trafficking there because they're major ports. It's easy to get people in and out. Um, the average cost of a slave worldwide is $90. And if you take into account um, the cost of the slave, the cost of the food for that slave, and whatever else you, uh, she or he might need for sexual purposes, um, the return on that $90 investment is about 60, a little over $67,000 per year. That's one girl or one child in one brothel in the United States, clear profit. It's massively lucrative. Um, and as of 2009, now these figures are, are actually old, these are from uh, 2011, but as of between 2009 and 2011, there were only 4,013 convictions worldwide. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm going to use up my five minutes just trying to get this thing to work. Okay. <laughs> um, it, can I just... Okay. Obviously, it's happening here. It's uh, part of the theme of this today's um, conference. Uh, finally, as of 2011, the U.S. State Department uh, Trafficking in Persons report has listed the United States as a source country, uh, a destination country, as well as a transit country. So we're involved in all aspects of trafficking. Um, and this is a, a map that shows you some of the places from which people come into this country for trafficking, but one of the largest problems that we have is internal trafficking, people who are trafficked um, within the United States. But they do come from all over. Um, trafficking for sexual exploitation is most common in the Americas. Uh, trafficking for labor exploitation is most common in Asia, but it's everywhere. And in terms of um, law enforcement and the resources that we put to solving this problem, the United States spends um, in one year what we spend on one day fighting the war on drugs. So we can actually, I think, do better. So what can you do? Well, one of the things you all are doing right now is you can educate yourself. You need to learn how to look beneath the surface as well as to know what the signs of trafficking are. Um, I want to bring to your awareness, some of you may have found the things, the uh, schedules on the table. Uh, CSU Chico is putting on a Human Trafficking Awareness Week, March 25th to 29th, by the student club Stop, Stop Trafficking of Persons. It's going to be, it's free and open to the public. We're going to have quite a number of very interesting speakers uh, and documentarians. So that's um, one of the things you can do to educate yourself. You can also stop the demand. We need to start trafficking the Johns. Usually in a brothel raid, the women go to, to jail and the men go home. Um, we need to target the Johns and make it unacceptable to buy sex or to buy people in general. Uh, we need to change societal attitudes toward trafficking. It's not just them and it doesn't just happen over there. It's us and it happens here. Um, we need to educate boys that it's not a male rite of passage to be able to buy a prostitute um, and we need to help the women and ultimately for labor exploitation whenever you can buy fair trade, buy fair trade. Um, there's lots of ways that we can help the women by raising awareness um, but one of the things that we desperately need in this country is we need uh, services for victims. Um, we know how to prosecute these crimes in the United States. We know what to do with the perpetrators. But when you have an underage girl who's just been freed from a dreadful, dreadful experience, we have little to no resources for her. Um, we need to change that. And I'm really pleased that the Sir Optimist is uh, engaged, involved, and interested in this because I can easily see the Sir Optimist spearheading efforts to create more resources for victims. Thank you very much. Thank you.